Welcome, this is Bob Mason, and welcome to the NoSQL Cassandra installation and configuration video, part two. You should have already watched the prior video and followed along and made the uh, configuration changes that were suggested in that video. And uh, this video is going to be a little bit shorter, uh, but we still have some uh, things we have to configure. And uh, this is where we're going to configure the Cassandra instance. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, before we get too far along, though, I wanted to show you, we want to look at the settings for the Cassandra. So I've clicked on the settings. I'm going to click, instead of general, I'm going to click on system. And I wanted to highlight that, um, notice how the slider bar is right here near the edge of the green area. Uh, I don't want, if I have too little memory available, then I might have, I will have problems with the Java runtime engine. If I have too much uh, memory used, then I'll have problems with the instance, I, with the PC freezing up and uh, not being able to continue. So I need to have it uh, right at the edge of the green uh, based on what memory is available on the PC that I'm using. So having said that, we can move along and start to use uh, the terminal again. So I'm starting up another terminal session. I'm going to do a change directory into Cassandra and the configuration directory. I'll do a PWD to see where I'm at. Looks like I'm in the right place. And I'm going to do an ls just to see the files that are there. Uh, the first file I'm going to edit using gedit is the Cassandra YAML file. <coughs> now I have several variables I need to change in here. Um, the first thing I want to do is change the cluster name. In this case, I changed it. I've already made these changes. I've changed it to Bob's Cluster. But I could change that back to just Bob Cluster. And I can save. Then I'll go up here to the toolbar, and I want to select Search for Text. And I'm going to type in one of the variables that we're trying to find. is called the Listen Address. And if I spell it correctly, it, I will be positioned within the file to the listen address. Now, in, in your file, since you haven't made any changes, it will say localhost, and you want to change that to the 127.0.0.1. Another variable we want to change, I'm going up here again to our search bar, and I'm going to put an RPC address. And that's the other variable that I want to change. And I want to change that in your file. It'll say localhost. I want to change that to 127.0.0.1. And that's referring to the address of the local host. So after having made those changes, I'm going to save. And I'll click up here. I can either click under File, Quit, or Close or I can click on the small x sign. In this case, I'll say quit. And I'm back to my terminal session. So the next file is a the Cassandra environment shell. And this time I'm going to do something different. I'm going to highlight it, right click, copy, right click, paste, put the name in to save a little bit of typing. And of course, here's my gedit again. And I'm going to position myself up at the top. Pardon me. So that when you, uh, when you open up the file, it'll look the same way. So what we're searching for in this case is I want to find a variable called max heap size with the equal sign. So I'm going to put in max Type in max heap 
size equals. Now, if I do that, that is positioning me down here. You'll, there may be some other variables that you find in this file called max heap size. Uh, don't worry about those. Um, these are the two variables that we want to change. Now, when you find yours, it'll have a 4 gig in here. We're going to change it to 1024 megabyte, which is basically setting it to 1 gig for our max heap size. And then also, we're going to change the variable below it, which is heap new size, to make that 100 meg. Once I've changed both of those variables, then I'll make sure I save. And I can click on this little red X up here and exit. And now I'm back. So we have one more file that we want to edit. And it's called our logback XML file. So here we go again with gedit logback.xml. Press the enter key and our g, our g editor will open up with the file that we have. So this file is a little different. This is an XML file. So if you're familiar with HTML or XTML, you'll recognize these tags. Uh, the change we want to make I'm highlighting right now is with file. And what I want to do is put in here, change the value that's currently there, and put in home, student, Cassandra, logs, and then system log. And so this will tell where on the local PC our system log file is going to be. And we may need to, use, to look at that system log file later uh, to see that uh, Cassandra started OK and was shut down properly. Um, we don't need to change this file name pattern, so we'll leave that the way it is. So this is really the only change we're going to make right here. Again, I'll highlight it with home student Cassandra log system log. Okay, once we've made that change, we can save. And I'll exit again. So those are the three configuration changes that we needed to make. The lab will um, start off uh, starting Cassandra or showing you how to start this Cassandra database and then have additional steps. But uh, these are the only steps we needed to do in the second FTE from the experts video. So please refer to your lab document and continue on with the lab document to complete the lab exercises for this week. I'm going to exit out of my terminal. And I'm also going to click here to do an ACP shutdown, which will gracefully shut down this environment, which will give me a fresh start the next time I come in to do some work. That's giving me the option when I want to shut down or restart. I'm going to say click on shutdown. And notice that it's going through the, the normal shutdown procedures here, similar to what happened when we, when we started the Cassandra environment. And then I can see that the Cassandra course on concepts is powered off. So at this point, we're going to stop recording. And as I mentioned, please refer to your lab instructions to continue on.